What's going on, my friends? This is Dave Sharp. Welcome to Wake Up Legendary. Uh, I love this topic that we're going to be talking about with Joshua Dean today. He's our guest, and I'm excited to hear from him, learn from him, talk with him. Uh, as you can see, the title says how comparisonitis can basically just kill your dreams. Um, it, it, it's such a, it's such a, <laughs> it's such a, it's such a terminal illness for businesses all over the world, uh, particularly solopreneurs and like online marketers, because we look at everybody and then we think we're not good enough, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and it's such a powerful conversation. I think it's going to be so relevant for all of you guys out there. Plus, who knows what else we'll learn. So with that being said, let's welcome to the show, Joshua Dean. What's up, brother? Hey, Dave. Good morning, man. Happy to be here. Hey, all the way from Denver, right? Uh, so born and born, bred and buttered in Denver, Colorado, uh, living in Northern California now. Oh, OK. OK. But I see you. I was I saw you repping the Broncos. So die hard. Uh, die hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice, dude. Nice. Um, did work. I know you work in the healthcare industry. Did that take you out to California or did did something else? Were you chasing a, a, a somebody? Were, how'd you how'd you end up in Cali? Yeah, so a little bit of both, actually. Um, grew up, like I said, Colorado, uh, first like 29 years of my life. And then uh, work took us, me and my wife, to uh, Wyoming, um, where we uh, then got into the healthcare industry and then actually mm -hmm. followed her job uh, out here to California. Um, and I kind of okay. honestly got lucky and, uh, and landed um, in a position here in California after we moved. Nice, nice. So, um, are you are you full are you full time still in the healthcare industry and doing this sort of as a side business? Exactly. Yep. Yeah. I still okay. put in uh, you know about 50, 55 hours a week. I mean, COVID wow. and everything that happened last year uh, didn't do anything yeah. to uh, to cut hours. But yeah, so still still doing that and uh, you know trying to get my my online business up off of the ground uh, in the, in the spare time. So tell us, I mean, having a good gig, obviously you and your wife, I mean, in the healthcare industry, you're probably not, you know, starving, right? I mean, I'm not saying it's, it's everything you want it to be, but it's, it's, it, it you know, there's potential there. There. Why also do you want an online business either to transition to that full time or as, as, as having it on the side? Talk to us a little bit about why, why an online business? What, what is appealing to that? Is it, is it money? Like what's your motivation? Yeah, so it's not so much the money. Um, and this is really a great question. And honestly, I'm, I'm kind of passionate about this one. Um, for me, it's it's really the freedom and it's, it's the time freedom. When I was younger, um, I think I spent a lot of time and energy fixating and focusing on, uh, you know, upping the bank account, right, which it's not really a bad thing to do. Um, but I kind of started to think when I got older um, and I lost uh, I lost my father. I started to think back about all the time that I spent trying to chase a number in a bank account yeah, um, sure. instead of the time I could have spent, you know, doing the things that I enjoy with the people that I love. Um, and when yeah. my uh, when my mom got sick, uh, it kind of there was there was a switch. Right. Um, and I, you know, I just kind of I just kind of realized that I don't I don't want to spend my life, you know, doing 50, 55 hours a week uh, to spend a little bit of time, you know, and a little bit of money actually doing the things that I, that I enjoy with the, with the people that I love. Right. And so yeah. like hundreds and thousands of other people, um, you know, I kind of got online and looked for, uh, looked for ways to kind of help make close to right. The, the, the amount of money that I was making, um, but with nowhere near the time commitment. Right. So my big thing right now is just time freedom. Yeah. Well, I mean, super, you got a big why right there. You know, and when when that pain hit cl cl hits close to home, it's like a wake up call. Absolutely. And although I'm thankful to still have both of my parents alive, I can only imagine how how much of a motivator that is to look back at your life and and ask, how can I do things um, to where I can <clears throat> or how could I have got more time or how can I yep. make sure that I have more time with the people that I love here? So if something well, it's destined. Nobody gets out of this thing alive, right? right? When, when, when it is all said and done, I can really say, man, I, I soaked up every minute. You know what I mean? Like I did everything that I could because at the end, bro. I mean, you and I both know this, man. I mean, any, any, any sane person uh, would have to admit, and I think not sane, but common sense, is that, like, dude, I've imagined myself on my deathbed before, and and nothing. 
about that visual is me saying, oh, I got like all this money and because of that, I'm totally satisfied with the way that I live my life. It's totally going to be, am I on good terms with my people? Like, are my yeah. kids by my side? Is my wife there? Did I spend adequate time with them? Like, that is the deal, man. I really feel that, bro. I, I, I think Absolutely. everybody can relate to that, you know? Yeah, I mean, I, I heard a, a quote that was so powerful. It hit so close to home just yesterday morning. Um, and it was, you know, I was listening to a podcast and a guy said, the one thing you never see behind a hearse driving down the street is a U-Haul truck. For real, man. And, you know, and it just it, it got me it got me thinking, man, you, you know, you, you can't take it with you. The only thing that you can take with you is those experiences that the time spent. So that's where yeah. I want to that's where I want to try and focus the rest of my life. Yeah, well, it's a big, it's a, it's a big and important goal, and I know you'll, I know you're gonna achieve it because you are so clear about it. And I really think that's what the difference between people who achieve stuff and people who don't is: is are you super clear about what you want, and are you super clear about what you need to go about, uh, you know, go about to be able to get it? So you're using online marketing as a vehicle. What led you to legendary? Um, you know, I think this is a perfect example um of social proof right so one day I, I finally bit the bullet right i've been putting it off and putting it off and putting it off and uh, i finally bit the bullet and just downloaded tiktok right just like so many other people in the pandemic um and i just kind of started started scrolling through right and i hit uh, you know the, the financial side um of tiktok and i saw tons and tons of people speaking and talking pretty passionately about affiliate marketing and uh you know, I, I got to the point where I was seeing so many people talk about it that, uh, you know, because first off, you know, I started looking at, you know, drop shipping and e-commerce. And I even went down the, you know, the scary road of MLM there for a quick little minute. Didn't didn't dive in or anything, but uh, started doing research. And then when I came across affiliate marketing um, and just saw how many people were being successful um, and really in what I would say a relatively short amount of time, were being able to um, achieve kind of the goal that I was uh, my like my main goal right and have more time freedom um that's that's really what really what hooked me right so like i said just scrolling through tiktok and coming across um some of the people that i think have been have been doing it on this app and, and before this app really well yeah. uh that's really what sold me so that's that's god it's so funny dude i mean like I, I actually think if it wasn't for, for this silly little app that many of us just wouldn't know each other. You know what I mean? Like, Seriously. I mean, cause, cause like, like YouTube's not as like addicting. It doesn't like, and it, it just, you know, like you go on, you watch a couple of, th I'm not saying YouTube doesn't work really well as a marketing like technique and strategy. Cause it does, but TikTok's really opened up a whole new can of worms and opportunity for marketers. And now you're turning around and using it, right? So mm -hmm. talk us through the first couple of, of the first sort of phase of your business and what it was like and how this comparisonitis piece came up for you. Yeah. So I think honestly where, you know, I, I try to stay away from comparing just because it's so easy. So I think I was, I was putting a lot of undue pressure on myself because of my why I thought that, you know, because other people were doing it, that I could be, you know, super hyper successful overnight. Right. And mm -hmm. so when, you know, my online business or my TikTok videos um, or my, you know, traction wasn't seeing the same kind of success that I was seeing other people getting doing seemingly, you know, the same kind of content and kind of pushing out the same kind of message. Um, it really, it really kind of struck home and was, it, it can be discouraging. Right. Yeah. Because, you know, you do you put out a piece of content um, and it gets, you know, 100 views or something like that. Not not any real traction. And then you're scrolling through the app and you see somebody else do something similar, you know, and it's got hundreds of thousands of views. And you you kind of start to compare and you think, well, you know, what are they doing that I'm not? How are they built for this? And I'm not. Um, and it can it just to me, it, it can really be a slippery, slippery slope. Um, and really what what brought me back back home or you know true north if you want to call it that was just kind of remembering everybody's got their own journey um you can't uh you know you can't compare the steps that somebody else is taking and apply yeah. them to your life everybody's got a different set of circumstances everybody's going to see success in, in in different ways so yeah yeah it's it's as i said and i think i said this yesterday i've, I've been saying it a lot lately i mean i said it at the beginning of the show i'm just restating comparisonitis is a is a is truly a 
you know, it's a terminal illness if there ever was one for businesses, because particularly new entrepreneurs. Notice I didn't say newbies there, guys. I don't like that word. And I think how we label and describe ourselves is really damn important and powerful. So new entrepreneurs, new marketers, not newbies, not I'm struggling. I really just, I'm. please guys, please, all of you who are listening, be very mindful of how you describe yourself. Because we create self-fulfilling prophecies. And in the name and the spirit of this whole right, act like think I almost got into like a whole like church. Or, in the name and the spirit <laughs> of the Holy Spirit. No. But in the spirit of comparisonitis, right? It's like it's it's kind of all in the same boat, right? Like when we the way it all kind of is the same, it's all in the same bucket describing ourselves as struggling or, and that's really just limiting beliefs popping up self-sabotage that it's, you know, I, I just got off of a training where I was kicking off a decade and a day for our, our blueprint students. And I said that all your self-sabotaging um, like limiting beliefs are all going to come up at the beginning of your business of at the beginning of you launching this business, all your shit, man, all your, garbage, dirty, like everything, all those self-sabotaging things are going to come to the surface. And instead guys of just repeating the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result, letting that soundtrack be the, be the, be the soundtrack for this new chapter, this new movie. It's like, we got to gain some awareness that, Oh, there's that song again. And I need to sing a different tune. So Joshua, what were some of your, old soundtracks that some of the things that that played inside of your head that you said to yourself and and what are some of the new soundtracks that you're trying to play now yeah it's crazy that you mentioned that man because um that that self-sabotage at the beginning and those limiting beliefs um i will be completely candid and honest here um the moment or the the the, the very few moments um immediately after investing in and purchasing the blueprints um I'm not too proud to admit I had a, a bit of a panic attack and my immediate thought was, or my immediate, I guess, mind frame was going back to um, limiting beliefs and self-sabotage, right? I immediately wanted to know, okay, how can I get a refund? How can I get my money back for this, right? And, and, and staying up in bed that entire night. Um, and it actually took my wife to kind of push me away from um, those those old thoughts and the, that old soundtrack that... Um, and really kind of like focus on my why and really dive into it. Right. So the, one of the mm -hmm. things that in the, in the seven days that really spoke to me was, or I'm sorry, the 15 days that really spoke to me was um, the dynamics, right. And that mental mind shift that you have yeah. to go through, um, you know, to, to be successful and really just get out of your own way. And I think that's the new soundtrack, right. For me now as compared to, okay, did I just make a mistake and how can I fix it? that's the old mindset the new mindset is okay i just I, I i jumped into this opportunity how do i make the best of it yeah and what what joshua is talking about there everybody joshua can you see that yep got you what he's talking about is 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 this concept of and this is the visual that i i sort of use now to explain this mechanics versus dynamics the mechanics are really the you know, basically the tools that you use, the thing, it's kind of like the mechanics for a carpenter would be, hey, Joshua, what's what kind of saw do you use? What brand of hammer do you use? Do you use Ryobi or DeWalt, right? Um, it, but, and that's what everybody sees, right? You see the carpenter, you see the truck that the carpenter's driving, you see the tools that he has on the back of his, uh, of his truck, and you might think, oh, that's what makes him successful. So another guy could go out and purchase that same exact truck and those same exact tools and be an utter f like total flop because he played himself and thought, Oh, well I have the same exact tools and the same exact truck. W why, why aren't I successful? Right. And what, what that second carpenter doesn't see is that big part of the, uh, the, the iceberg that's underwater, which is the dynamics. 
And that's his ability, that, that first carpenter's ability to read blueprints. It's all the ups and downs that he's went through that's developed his mindset. It's his, it's his discipline that he has. It's his habits that he has. It's uh, all, of the, all of the perseverance, the grit. It's his ability to be able to market himself and sell jobs, right? It's all those other pieces that we don't see right? That are sort of beneath the water, but are really the large part of the avalanche. And so, you know, what are some of your big dynamics, man? I mean, what, what, what have been the big deter, like the, the big, um, the, the, the big, uh, levers inside of your business that, you know, like, this is what I need to do. Is it consistency? Is it, is it, is it attitude? You know, is it that, is it that self-talk? Like, what do you think your big dynamics are, uh, that, that have, you know, that move the needle for you specifically? Yeah, definitely. You know, you have to cut out the negative self-talk, right? Any, you have to be your, your own biggest fan, right? Because you can, it's such a powerful, powerful thing, your own judgment of yourself. And like I say, with comparison, your own judgment of yourself, I think, is so much more powerful than anybody's outside judgment of what you're doing. So that mental yeah. flip and just attitude and being your own you know, biggest fan just to keep pushing forward, being consistent, right? Doing the things that uh, you don't you know, always want to do, um, but you know are going to benefit you in the long run, right? You just, you just have yeah. to keep that, uh, that attitude of positivity, right? Yeah. No, I, it, it's so true, man. Um, we are, we are, we, what we think of ourselves is the most important person's opinion of us. And Absolutely. that's one of the reasons why I say that self-esteem is the bedrock of success. Because without self-esteem, um, you know, I'm not going to have the confidence to, to, to shoot and then post, right? Right. Post, right? Yeah. Or I might, yeah. I, might keep, I might keep that bad boy on draft. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Like, it, oh, it, it man, I got that. The drafts. Oh, man, I got me a whole file of draft, baby. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm sh Listen, the other thing, man, I used to do this all the time, bro. Honestly, this was back before uh, I – before for whatever reason i don't know if i feel like it's back before back <laughs> when i went to walk 10 miles to shoot a video no but for whatever reason when i started i used to make or ask my i didn't make her stand there and hold the camera woman i didn't make her but i said honey would you hold the camera and 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 and, and film me and i don't know why i just didn't get a stand or something but i you know it'd be hours she'd be standing there because i'd go hey guys how's it going this is david <laughs> Oh crap. Let me start over. And then it'd be just uh, right. Cause, cause, and she'd be like hating me. She hated me and the business, <laughs> yeah. right? Because it, she didn't, she didn't see what I saw, of course, but also I'm, I'm, I'm a miserable son of a bitch doing this because my, my, my self-esteem every, I think I'm, I, you know, I think I'm so, I'm such a big, you know, I'm so self-absorbed, right? And I'm so, I was so insecure that I thought that people were going to pick apart my speech, like as if it was like a presidential address or something. I mean, I'm posting a freaking video that at the beginning probably wasn't going to get any views anyways, right? And I'm sitting here <laughs> meticulously trying to get it to be perfect or whatever. And it's like, it's like, as I've built my self-esteem, first of all, the words just come out smoother. And the second piece that's happened Joshua is if I stumble or fumble I just I'm like that's just who I am that's just who I am authentically in this moment I'm just this myself I just had a bumble or a stumble or farted or did whatever I did and sorry that's just me and what I found is the more that I've embraced my own authentic self and and built my self-esteem also the more people have embraced in in enjoyed my content yep. so what what comes up for you as i as i say that yeah so that's that just goes all the way back to that uh, comparisonitis right trying yeah. to trying to you know it's it's really it's really easy to compare yourself to others and then start to kind of you know mold into or you know shape shift out of what you are and being authentic and unique to yourself to try and match what you what you see or what you're comparing as as success and i think that it's just it's super important to just kind of you know follow your true north stay stay true to you because i think if anything uh, if i've learned anything um about you know marketing on the internet and um just this whole online business is 
regardless of how unique you think your idea or you know a, a, a piece of content might be chances are on the internet somebody has already done it right so <laughs> the only thing that you have that can be truly unique and authentic to yourself is yourself right so that's that's why you got to just kind of yeah. put up the blinders when it comes to comparison um yeah. and my wife says it all the time just do you boo 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 hey boo boo <laughs> what up boo boo man we should have said boo boo dean on this yeah. on this mofo this morning that, that might be the new tiktok handle after this you never know 5280 affiliate is your tiktok handle yes sir what's the 5280 just just curious mile high city 5280 feet denver come on now oh, i yeah. like that we're, we're elevated out here oh high is an understatement <laughs> you know what i mean high you know, we, we, we're, we're not as, uh, progressed over here in Florida <laughs> as y'all over on that West coast. You know what I mean? We're oh, still yeah, making no, a big not. deal out of a couple of buds, you know, <laughs> fair enough. Uh, I don't smoke personally, but see, I'm the recovering drug addict. Who's got to make the conversation about drugs. You know what I mean? Like it's just, <laughs> well, sorry you're being, you're being unique and authentic to you, my man. Yeah. And, and I, I agree. Like when we, when we go to, it's funny. I mean, going back to that center of the universe, self-absorbed thing, like it's just so funny how much importance we put on. It's like, okay, I'm going to make my first video. It's like, Oh God, I'm trying to come up with like what the video is going to be about. I mean, we, we literally act like we're, we're, we're debuting a, 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 a movie at the Sundance festival or something. I mean, yeah. it's like, it's like, bro, chill. It's if it's a TikTok video or it's a yeah. YouTube video, you, you, you know, I mean, it's like, it, it's not that big of a deal. And I think that that's a bit of an adjustment because when you go into business, that grand opening, let's cut the ribbon. That's what we're all trained. That's what we've, that's what we've been raised to think that we'll launch you to business, get ready to get ready. Let's, you know, launch party investors are there, customers, family. All right, guys, let's cut the ribbon as if that sort of performance or big to do is going to happen. The first time you post the video on the internet, it's like, it's not that it's not that big of a deal, bro. It's not like that. That's yeah. that kind of business launch grand opening does it. That's all staged anyways. That's just the movies. That shit doesn't even really happen in real life. Honestly, I've seen plenty of offline businesses launched and it's like kind of like usually it's a fumble and a bumble and oh shit, I, we got a customer yeah. and oh man, you know, it's not anything that's like really put together. So I think learning to just let life in our business happen the way that it's kind of supposed to happen, right? Which is probably not what we expect or not. the. It's kind of like Joshua. Now I'm speaking uh, from a woman, so I'm going to be very careful. But I've had plenty of people, women, my wife included, say that the the idea that I had growing up about princesses and getting getting rescued by a white knight and all this that I watched in movies – Ain't, that fairy tale ain't real life, right? Right. Right? And and it's kind of the same thing. It's kind of the same thing with businesses that I think we have this expectation that it's going to look and feel a certain way. And then when it doesn't, we're like, ooh, something must be messed up, right? But it, yeah. it's – right? It's just it's, trying I mean, to learn. It's not a bad thing, right? I mean, no. it, nothing has to be perfect. I mean, that first TikTok probably before I posted it sat in my drafts for – two or three weeks before I just pulled the trigger, right? I was tr just trying to make sure that every little detail was perfect. But again, when you, when you try to start doing that kind of stuff, you're not being, you know, authentic to you. Like that's, that's not me. That's not how I operate. Right. I fly by the seat of my pants in 90% of my life. Right. So right. the moment that like, it just kind of triggered for me was like, okay, why are you spending so much time doing this? You don't spend that much time doing anything else in your life. This is just a 15 second video. <laughs> run it so how how long ago was that uh so i posted my first tiktok uh, like mid-december of last year so how how what's your method of operation now if you were to, to describe do things sit in drafts i mean how different is it now give us some contrast so i mean I used to spend like in the beginning, I used to spend in, in, you know, my opinion, I would spend hours trying to, uh, you know, create and edit, uh, 
crappy TikTok. <laughs> and now, um, you know, crappy is uh, subjective, right? So now, you know, if, a, if an idea hits me or if a thought strikes me, I just hit the record button. And I think the trick is not to rewatch it more than once, right? You want to make sure that your message is getting across and you're not stumbling or, you know, saying anything that goes against guidelines, God forbid. Um, but the, I think the more you watch, the more critical you're going to be and the more you'll start to compare it to other things. Um, yeah. uh, the trick is to just watch it once, make sure it's good to go and then send that sucker out, man. Yeah. Yeah, man. No, I, I totally, I totally agree about watching it. I think that's great advice. That maybe is some of the best advice I've ever heard about reviewing content. Don't watch it more than one time right? One time is enough. You just want to make sure there's not a major flaw, but honestly, just like Ariana said, hearing a stutter or a small misstep in your videos is the most human thing. And it gives you so much more credibility. I agree with that. Absolutely. You know, that's one of the reasons why, why I kind of like going live. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because going live, which you can do on every platform. Now you can do that on Facebook, which we're on. You can do it on YouTube. You can do it on TikTok. You can do it on Instagram. Every platform has the ability with a push of a button to go live. And oh, I man. think going live really, if you guys want to really improve your skills, like you want to really improve your communication and your self acceptance and grow your self esteem and get more comfortable, just kind of talking, to a live audience and, and just improve your communication, go live, have a schedule to go live a couple of times a week, uh, or every day. I mean, look at me, man. I mean, I'm, I'm 10 plus years into this game and I'm going live a minimum of four times per week for a minimum of 30 minutes a day, man. It keeps me sharp, man. No pun Absolutely. intended. Absolutely. I mean, it's a skill set, right? It's a skill set. Being able to kind of fumble and bumble your words, but maintain your, your track of thought. It, I mean, yeah. it's a skill set. I think it's, it's a, a really yeah. powerful one, especially um, when you're kind of like presenting yourself to the masses. Yeah, it's it's powerful and it's profitable. You know what I mean? Like yes. it's profitable Absolutely. because because you it's a leadership skill. Mm -hmm. It's a leadership skill because now in any scenario, um, offline with a group of people, whatever you have the ability to know that you can communicate to a group of people. Mm -hmm. And the real secret to making money online is leveraging tools that allow you to speak one to many, right? That's what this whole thing is all about, right? It's, it's videos. It's, it's whether I'm doing a live and speaking to 140 people at one time, or whether it's putting up a video that's going to get hundreds of thousands of, or, or thousands of views or whatever, hundreds of views, millions of views, or, or whether I'm doing a, a presentation on a webinar to where I'm going to make an offer to a thousand people, right? The, it's leveraging these tools allow us to speak and sell one to many. And it is absolutely a, a, a pro, the most profitable skill. Okay. I would say I would say in 2021 now copywriting is right there neck and neck with it because the ability to be able to write persuasively, it's so profitable. It's so underrated, but in 2021 with all these platforms, man, that allow you to go live and allow you to post video, the ability to be able to communicate, um, like, it, it, what I call edutainment, entertaining and educational is so it's the most profitable skill you'll ever develop. So that's why I like going live. And I like, I like anything that just helps me to uh, anything that helps me to grow. Right. And, and that's going to be uncomfortable. Joshua, what's been your most uncomfortable, uh, the, you know, actions that you've taken in your business recently that, you know, that you haven't particularly liked, but you know, that, that, that they're growth pieces? I think, um, honestly, the, the hardest part for me was probably going live. Right? I think th there's always like uh, kind of like a shield or an armor when you post a video and then you can step away from it, right? And you don't have to worry about, you know, the judgment because as soon as the judgment comes in, that's when the comparison starts. So when you post, you can kind of set it and forget it. But like you said, going live, um, it, it really just kind of puts you in the middle of it. Um, and I've been I've been trying to do that more and more just to kind of get over, you know, that uh, that negative self-talk or the the judgment that's coming coming from within. And I think that's super powerful. Um, and yeah. yeah, I just want to mention, you, I think you mentioned it either yesterday or the day before 
um, in, in this call and the wake up call, but just the, the, like the time that we live in, we're not doing, you know, business to consumer anymore. We're in that C to C mentality. And I think that's where, um, going live, like you said, is so powerful because it's creator directly to consumer. And when you go live, you have that, you know, for lack of, you know, uh, almost one-on-one connection, um, with everybody. Yeah. That's, uh, yeah, I think so far that's kind of been, that was the most uncomfortable, uh, right. Yeah. I, I just kind of, I wanted to, again, like I just wanted to do the, the mechanics, right. And, and it took a lot more to kind of shift that mental mind frame for the dynamics, right. The, the just posting a piece of content and then just letting everything kind of work on the back end. Um, yeah. Get, getting over that's been, uh, but difficult, but also super, super rewarding. Yeah. Well, you know, you are, is is that I want to just confirm that's your TikTok handle, 5280 affiliate. That's right. That's it. Yep. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, you guys can search him Joshua Dean or uh 5280 affiliate. I would assume both of those are gonna pull up his TikTok on uh pull up his his uh his account. Um yeah, man, I I, I th- this <laughs> that's the whole piece about about going live and even doing videos. What what I what I see a lot of people do that is less effective is when they're like like they shoot a video and they're like, "Hey guys, what's going on?" It's it's it can be more effective when you shoot your videos as if you're just talking to one person. Because then that person feels more connected to what yeah. you're saying. Absolutely. Versus, you know, referring to your viewers as, hey, guys, what's going on? This is, hey, and I wanted to tell you guys, like, if you're on a live and there's tons of people and that might be more like appropriate or make more sense. But if you're shooting a video, it it, it always and I see even really popular marketers, successful marketers who shoot videos and and do webinars and stuff like automated videos and sales videos and stuff. And they refer to, they call people, say, Hey guys, and Hey guys, and Hey guys, this way, Hey guys, Hey guys. And it's like, he's really missing out on that opportunity to connect more and just look into the camera and just say, when you get started and what I want to show you today, right? It's really a missed opportunity to connect because Like you said, Joshua, it's such a huge opportunity, whether you're going live or whether you're doing a, a, you know, a a video to make somebody feel like you're talking directly to them, you know, to make somebody feel like you're talking directly to them. And, and you are, you know, what I, what I try to think of when I'm filming or I'm doing lives or whatever is, man, there's somebody on here may not be everybody. It's not going to be everybody that listens. Some people are going to listen and really not like it, but there's somebody that really is hungry, man. And there's somebody that really is like looking, they're taking notes. They're like, and I'm speaking to that person, man, you, I'm speaking to you, that person that is like, that wants this bad. That's like here. That's like, you know, what time it is, you know, what, where you've been and what you you see how powerful that is when I do that. Right. Like who, like, one of you, if not many of you, as I was just talking right directly to you, you were going, son of a bitch, this mother knows I'm here. I ain't playing. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it's, and it's, it's such a, it's such a, um, it's such a, this, this technology that we have, although it, it's a double-edged sword, right? It's like, we can never get away from it. We got to create boundaries and shit for me. Anyways, I do. Uh, so I can get away from screens and still enjoy nature and stuff like that. But man, it's such a powerful tool to build businesses, Joshua. And I'm glad you found it, brother. And I'm glad you got connected with us. I'm glad we're connected with you. And I'm 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 so thrilled that you. Um, what would you say to somebody who's sitting on a, maybe a legendary marketer checkout page about your experience here, and if maybe they should consider becoming a member of our community? Oh, absolutely, leap, absolutely leap. I think. <clears throat> I think one of the uh, biggest benefits of joining the legendary program in the community is just that, right? The community of people that are just so incredibly willing to genuinely and truly uh, offer help and help you along the path, right? And I think something that really I I didn't know when I first got into it, but is I think kind of why I was subconsciously gravitating towards affiliate marketing um, is it's, it's more than just 
promoting, right? Or digital marketing. It's more than just promoting some product or some service, right? It's really, it's creating a bond um, with like-minded individuals that you just haven't met yet. Um, and I think going through this whole experience um, has really, has really driven that home for me. So um, I guess my one piece of advice of, you know, if you're on the ledge, just leap, just leap, jump in with yeah. both feet, don't look back. Um, and you know, it's not, it's little not little as big of a fall as it looks, right? Exactly. Right. Exactly. right. Cause yep. it looks like kind of like the story that you shared earlier about after, you know, buying yeah. a, a training program you're like oh my god i just jumped off the ledge and i'm gonna literally die right yeah. oh yeah and, and then it's like oh wow it's kind of like the um the the uh i don't know <laughs> the person who fell into the water and is like i'm drowning i'm drowning and then it's only two feet right and it's stand like they up. just stand up <laughs> right right stand up dude um brother hey man uh thanks for coming on thanks for your time today it's hey, been you. incredible and bro keep up the great work and i hope you'll come back and keep us posted oh absolutely absolutely i'm uh, i'm here for the long haul that's for sure all right I think Joshua, the next thanks. one of these i'll be in uh, i'll be on the beach somewhere enjoying my time freedom so nice nice well awesome and it sounds like you've got a an awesome uh wife so give her our best and you guys stay safe be legendary we'll talk to you soon buddy all right i appreciate it brother all right all right, my friends, have a fantastic Friday. We'll see you back here on Monday. Uh, please go follow Joshua. Also, let me throw his banner up one more time. 5280 Affiliate. You can find him on TikTok and connect with him elsewhere there. Um, just a lot of knowledge, a lot of, lot of good experience for those of you who are just kind of either getting started or starting over and battling with some of these limiting beliefs in this comparisonitis and these things that all of us deal with, even that powerful story about buying our blueprint prints and then panicking right after such an authentic and transparent look into what all of us go through. We all have these feelings. We all have these similar experiences. Sometimes we think that we're the only ones who do right. Like, Oh, I'm, you know, this must just be me. It's not, it's not just you, right? It's all of us, right? We're all having this incredibly uh, <laughs> raw human experience all the time. I know we dress it up and which, but it's just, it's, that's what I think. The more we embrace that, the more successful we are because we get comfortable in our own skin and we just stop overthinking things, stop comparing and just pull the trigger and just make moves, man. And the more moves you make, the more it builds up and success, <laughs> success is there somewhere, right? Sometimes we stumble on it. Most of the time we just accidentally stumble on it. And, and, and sometimes it's, it's perfectly executed hardly ever, but, uh, but, but it's there. And the number one rule is don't quit. All right. So we'll be back here Monday. Be legendary, my friends. Have a great weekend. And we'll talk to you soon. Peace.